Package copies go from dock on time. Our advisors are down and we're ready for departure. We got the L. And we just heard the confirmation, Dragon is a go to undock. So now we are waiting for the undocking sequence to actually begin, and they are targeting that for 4.30 p.m. Pacific time, so it looks like eight minutes from now. Um, and once that begins, it'll take less than five minutes for Dragon to separate from the International Space Station, which ha has called home for two months now. Now, the first step in the undocking uh, sequence, which is, again, automatic, is uh, for the umbilicals that are providing power, telemetry, and commanding capability between the Space Station Dragon for those to retract. Um, once those retract, we'll actually have Dragon perform an unlatch from the space station, releasing 12 hard capture hooks that are around the, the vestibule. Those hard capture hooks are what are providing that airtight seal around the vestibule, and they'll actually come in two separate phases. So we'll hear a, a call for six of those, and then we'll hear a call for all of those being uh, detached. And then finally, uh, after that all that entire process, which takes about four and a half minutes, then Dragon will be ready to actually depart and push itself away and separate using its Draco thrusters. Yeah, and so Dragon's initial departure from station is a little different from any of the other docked vehicles like the Soyuz, because that relies on springs to push them away from the docking port. Uh, in this case, Dragon will actually execute those two short thruster firings to undock. That uses a combination of those 12 Draco engines around the base of the capsule, with the first breaking any stiction between between Dragon and the docking port, and the second slowly backing the spacecraft away. And so we're expecting the call for undocking sequence to begin in the next few minutes. And the crew aboard, uh, they will be able to see those transitions. So what will be happening here is the, the flight computers uh, on the vehicle will issue themselves into a state when that command is issued. And actually on the crew displays, uh, on, on every display, they've got a prominent location that shows what the current states are. They're also able to follow along uh, and see what the state of the vehicle is. So that, those are the displays that they've got pulled up on their screen right now. That middle display actually has uh, the, the cards that describe what they can expect to see along with some inline telemetry that they're getting from the vehicle directly, uh, as well as their current positioning relative to the International Space Station. And then they've also got some views on the side that are uh, each of them in their, their respective displays that are showing a forward view of the spacecraft as well as the status of those uh, docking hooks. At this point, the umbilicals both still installed because uh, that command has not been issued. And the uh, vestibule should be pretty close to vacuum. Getting closer every second to that undocking command being sent. We're looking for that in about five minutes from now. Taking a look at data here, I see the vestibule is reading as a 0.1 PSI. Um, so definitely not very friendly to humans. <laughs> Everything moving smoothly throughout the day to bring us to this point with uh, the crew ingressing Dragon, donning their suits, getting in their seats, closing the hatch, and then uh, Chris Cassidy closing the A-pass hatch on the station side, along with that node two forward hatch, bringing that space down to as close to a vacuum as possible, and that's where we're at right now. Uh, conducted some leak checks to ensure the seals between those hatches were solid. Everything looking good for an on-time departure today. Pretty comfy in the cabin right now. Um, you know, that vestibule is pretty near vacuum, but in the cabin it's actually pretty close to what we would see at sea level. And uh, still about 76 degrees in there. So pretty comfortable. Of course, Bob and Doug uh, are only partially seeing that. Earlier they closed down their visors. Um, and so the, the suits that they're wearing protect them in the event of a depressurization event. They also protect them uh, if there were was a fire on board. It's made of fire resistant materials. And so as we're getting 
to this critical step of separating from the space station. Um, if something were to go wrong here, those suits would provide that critical uh, life support to them, pressurizing if the cabin pressure were to unexpectedly drop. It's actually part of the reason why we've spent so long in this uh, vestibule depressurization. The operators, both on the space station side and the mission control uh, Hawthorne side, uh, scrutinizing the data for any indication of a leak through the forward hatch. Um, of course, that, that leak check performed earlier uh, with no findings, um, showing that the, the vehicle is nominal and ready for, for uh, docking. You know, once we mentioned that undocking uh, will take a few minutes before we actually see the separation occur. Um, but once the, the command is sent, those 12 latches will be retracted. Uh, the umbilical will be disconnected. Dragon is already on internal power, however. Um, it's not receiving any power from the International Space Station. But uh, once that umbilical is retracted, those hooks are removed. Be looking for those two short bursts to send Dragon on its way, and then things will things will speed up with those uh, departure burns afterward. Just a couple of minutes away from that on time undocking. That'll be 4.30 p.m. Pacific, 11.30 p.m. GMT, or the time that the astronauts use aboard the International Space Station. Looking for the undocking command to be sent in just about 30 seconds. And again, a quick, quick preview of what we expect to happen. Uh, umbilicals will retract, then we'll see those docking hooks uh, disconnect, and then we'll actually see those undocking burns followed pretty shortly after by a departure burn. Dragon SpaceX, undock sequence commanded. Ever copy. So that undocking sequence right on time. And that was 4.30 p.m. Pacific time, 11.30 p.m. GMT. The umbilical now retracting. The International Space Station flying 263 statute miles over Namibia in Africa. Dragon SpaceX, umbilical D-mate complete and nominal. There's confirmation of the umbilicals retracted, so no longer receiving power or data or commanding from the International Space Station. And uh, there's a view on your screen of Dragon currently in eclipse. Uh, Gary, how's it looking from Mission Control at Johnson? We're looking good, Shiva. We have uh, we are now inside the undocking sequence. Good umbilical retraction. Standing by for the driving of those hooks. There's 12 hooks that will be released in two gangs of six. Standing by for the driving of the hooks. Here we have good motion on the primary set of hooks.
Again, first set of hooks driving the navigation light, the forward end of Dragon clearly visible from this view from one of the uh, Japanese cameras. Again, we are inside of the undocking sequence now. Good umbilical retraction, and we're driving the first set of hooks. Dragon SpaceX, first set of hooks open and nominal. Copy nominal hooks in the first set. The first six hooks have completed their driving first set down. The second set is now driving. We're now committed to undock. Seeing good motion on that second set of hooks. Continuing to drive. These will be the final set of hooks. There's six of them holding Dragon into place now. Afterwards, we'll conduct two undocking burns to physically separate Dragon. Dragon SpaceX, all Look hooks open and nominal. All hooks open. Dragon departing. Dragon SpaceX, separation confirmed. Okay, separation confirmed. Great burns, physical separation, 4.35 p.m. Pacific. Thrusters looking good, counting down to a nominal departure burn zero coming up shortly. Dragon SpaceX, depart burn zero complete. Happy complete, we're visors up. And you heard to part burn zero complete that 12 second firing moving Dragon slightly faster away from the International Space Station using those service section Dracos. And with that, Bob and Doug have concluded their stay aboard the International Space Station. They're on their way back to planet Earth. Confirms a physical separation at 4.35 p.m. Pacific as the station and Dragon were flying 267 statue miles over Johannesburg, South Africa. Two good undocking burns and a nominal departure burn zero. Next departure burn coming up in about five minutes.
We'll be monitoring Crew Dragon throughout the departure sequence, but with Dragon flying free, that'll do it from us here in Mission Control Houston. Godspeed, Bob and Doug. To take you through the rest of the departure sequence, we'll send you back over to Hawthorne. Thanks, Gary. Departure Burn Zero sets Crew Dragon, Endeavor, and Bob and Doug on their journey home. Dragon Ship Endeavor is now on a trajectory to head up and over the station before additional maneuvers will change its orbital path to take it below and in front of the station. Dragon will autonomously accomplish that through three additional departure burns, with that next one coming up in just a couple of minutes to get Bob Hurley, Bob Vankin and Doug Hurley well away from the space station and on their way home. Beautiful view, uh, just had a beautiful view there of the relative navigation center, sensors uh, providing an infrared view of the International Space Station as Bob and Doug drift away from it. And uh, of course, as they are drifting away, going into that slightly higher orbit, uh, just because of balancing the force of gravity along with their centripetal acceleration, they will move a little bit slower than the space station. And so we'll expect Space Station to sort of drift ahead, and then as they conduct those additional burns, getting out of the approach ellipsoid uh, and the keep out sphere, then uh, they will come back down below sta Space Station, with their apogee being about 10 kilometers below Space Station and, and slowly reducing their perigee. Next up in just a couple of minutes, uh, scheduled for 4.40 p.m. Or Pacific time and 11.40 p.m. GMT will be depart burn one. That's a 20 second burn to further increase the opening rate between Crew Dragon and the International Space Station. Yeah, and, uh, that view, the what we just previously had, and you can actually see it on the, the right-hand screen of, uh, of Bob's display, is a relative navigation sensor that's providing an, an infrared view from the forward hatch of Dragon, uh, looking back towards the, the forward uh, module of the International Space Station. So that's where Dragon has been for the last 63 days. Uh, coming up in less than a minute is departure burn number one. Burn coming just about five minutes after separation. And uh, this is going to increase that opening rate between the space station and Dragon. And separation occurred on time today, as with everything else occurring on schedule, sending Bob Benkin and Doug Hurley back toward Earth, back toward home. So very, very exciting moment. Um, we should expect to hear a call out here for departure burn number one. Uh, departure burn number one is pretty short. It only lasts about 21 seconds, but uh, it's the burn that's going to get us on our way up, out, and away um, through the keep out sphere and uh, through the approach ellipsoid. Again, the keep out sphere, um, about 200 meter sphere around the International Space Station, and the approach ellipsoid, uh, four by four by two kilometer ellipse. Uh, if you imagine two central parks in New York City next to each other, uh, that's about how big that is. Just uh, guidance references for visiting vehicles. And we're seconds away now from departure burn one. These are autonomous burns. Uh, Bob Bankin and Doug Hurley are not pushing any buttons to make this happen. Uh, these are programmed into Dragon, and uh, we will be looking for that in just a few seconds from now. That's a view from the space station, those two lights. Um, the, the green light is the view that on the right-hand side of the Dragon vehicle, uh, that would be the side that Bob Benkin was sitting on, and the red light, the side that Doug Hurley was sitting on. Uh, it's actually made pretty, pretty quick work getting away from the station. Gonna look up some data, see if I can get the actual distance to station right now. And departure burn one has begun, that 20-second burn. This will also take it outside of the keep out sphere and outside of the approach ellipsoid and after complete. Dragon SpaceX, depart burn one complete. Nominal burn, you are go to doff your suits per procedure, 4.012. Reminder that the ground will be deactivating the big loop following exit from the approach ellipsoid, which is approximately 12 to 14 minutes from now. Okay. We 